Hello, hello. Bear with me for just a minute or two. I'm getting everything all finished up for tonight's live. Getting my phone plugged in. Getting my Facebook app all open and ready to go. Oh, no, we don't want volume. All right, you know what, let's go ahead, get the window up a little bit so there's less of a glare. I'm gonna really quickly, just bear with me, I'm gonna wipe off my camera screen. All right. Sometimes I've found that that makes things a little less blurry. All right. Hello, Amanda. Thanks so much for being here. I'm gonna make sure this is as straight as I can possibly make it. That's always the biggest challenge. All right, if you guys are stopping by, I'm gonna ask if you could drop a quick comment just to say hello. I love hearing who's stopping by, where you guys are from, what you're up to tonight. I don't know, Show me, tell me something interesting about you or something fun or something that we can talk about. And we will be creating this card during tonight's live. I'm just waiting for a couple people to hop back in and we'll get started in a minute or so. All right. Let's see. Da, 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 da. All right. Why am I missing my Facebook live all of a sudden? Refresh. There we go. All right. All right. So we've got hello, Julia. And of course, hello, Amanda and Dina from New York. And we've got Don here tonight. We've got Carrie and we've got Susie. Oh, your lit has been sunshine. That's so appropriate, isn't it? Well, I'm glad you're here tonight, Sunshine Dawn. And then we've got, oh, wait, no, that's Susie, Sunshine Susie, my bad. And hello, Debbie, but you live in Michigan. You're from Washington State. That's fantastic. We're close by. I'm in the Chicago suburbs. We've got Lynette from Northern California. And then oh, Amanda's in Florida right now, probably having wonderful beach time. Oh, you, Julia, you're so sweet. Thank you. And we've got Betty from Calgary. Mm -hmm. All right. Kara, it, it's a good one. I promise this is a good one. I had a lot of fun making this card. And what I love about this card is this is a card that anybody can recreate. There's no sort of special like skills you have to know to make it. It's just ink blending and die cutting and that's about it. All right. Hello, Elsie, and hello, Susie. So if you guys are watching, make sure to drop a comment, say hello. I do want to let you guys know in advance, we are giving away a $25 gift card to the Thermal Web website. So if you're just watching, make sure you make a comment and say hello. We are going to pull one of the commenters as our winner tonight. So make sure that you drop a comment so you're eligible to win a prize. And yes, Patricia, I'm so glad you made it too. I hope my little tip about refreshing the page helped or maybe it didn't, but regardless, you're here. So that's all that's important right now. So hello, hello, everybody. I hope you are having a wonderful Wednesday. It's hump day. We are halfway through the regular work week to those of us that work normal Monday through Friday jobs, to those of us that don't. Bless you for working on the weekends is all I have to say. You are stronger than I. So, okay, so tonight we are going to get into a little bit of flock crafting, and we're going to also be using the adhesive transfer designs. Um, if you guys are familiar with the adhesive transfer designs, you might already know this, but the sentiment that we're going to be using today is from the Sentiments 2 set from Unity, um, and it pairs perfectly with these Lawn Fawn die cuts. I just, I couldn't help myself. I had to use this one. Hello, Kevin. And Melanie and oh yes Julia bring on the weekend uh Lorraine hello and Marianne hello Debbie hi hi thank you guys so much for being here oh my gosh so 
So many of y'all, and you guys are making me all happy. So thanks for being here. Um, so what we're gonna get into is I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how we make this card. So we're gonna get into it right now. Um, I always kind of start with like the fundamental pieces first. And what I wanna work on first is that background, which is a stenciled background. And then we're going to be foiling on top of it with the adhesive transfer design. So I'm gonna go ahead, set this off to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and recreate it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm I'm going to use just a little bit of pixie tape and I'm going to tack my piece of Bristol blending cardstock down onto my glass mat just to kind of help hold it in place. Oh my gosh, Julissa, no problem for being late. Hello, Jilly. Thanks so much for being here. And if you guys haven't caught one of my lives before, just know that I, unfortunately, I'm not always going to catch every single comment. So if I miss one of your questions or something important, don't feel bad if you've got to post it one more time for me to see it. I promise that I am not causing or ignoring any comments. Um, sometimes I just miss them or I'm just kind of multitasking and that can not be the greatest for me, but we get there. All right. What do you... All right. So I've got my stencil all down. We're going to do a little bit of ink blending. So I'm just going to do two colors. We're going to do squeezed lemonade and mustard seed distress oxide inks. So I'm going to go ahead and get my squeeze lemonade tool and I'm just going to pick it up. And I do have my ink, ink stand out. I don't know why I'm not using it. And we're just gonna blend the first half or the top half of this panel. We're gonna go ahead and blend it in this squeezed lemonade. I'm only using four colors for this stencil background even after I put the stencil on top of it. All right. All right. I'm realizing, I think that when I stenciled this the first time, I must have done something else with holding it down, but that's okay. Next, we're gonna go in with the mustard seed. And I'm going to just kind of twist this. Clearly my glass mat is a little too slick right now, and that's okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this. Get that real nice vibrant yellow. And as you can see, I've got one of those harsh lines, but that's okay. I'm gonna go back in with my squeezed lemonade blending foam and blend it together. And it's gonna give you a nice two-tone ombre. And if you guys wanna use other colors, if you wanna do blues for your backgrounds, totally cool, go for it. I just thought that this was kind of a quick way to get what we're looking for. All right. Alrighty, everyone. All right. Oh, Lorraine, you've never used flock. It's super easy. I promise I'll show you how it goes. Um, I'm going to flick some water on top of my Distress Oxide ink uh, panel because it is water reactive. So it's going to give me some of those bleach spots that I highly covet when I'm crafting. And I'm going to go ahead and grab just a craft towel, it's a microfiber towel, press it down, pick it up. And as you can see, I've got all those little dapple spots. So this should be dry and I'm gonna take, I've got this foofy brush that I like to use just to kind of clean off my panel. Make sure I've got no stragglers. All right. Now next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that aside for a moment and I'm gonna get my splatter box ready. What was the other yellow besides squeezed lemonade? Patricia, it was mustard seed. That was the second distress oxide color. All right, so I've got the Sunray stencil from Lawn Fawn that I'm gonna go ahead and set down and I'm gonna shake up my Pixie Spray. And this is one of those stencils, I like to use the term delicate. Um, and what I mean by that is it's easy for it to kind of get shifted around a little bit. And a lot, as you can see, these have lines that aren't really anchored by anything, so it's easy for them to move around. So I love using Pixie Spray on stencils like this to get a light tack layer to just hold everything in place. So I'm going to take my can of Pixie Spray, I shook it up a little bit, and we're just going to spray it over. And I'm going to set it to the side so it can dry. I'm going to start getting everything else ready. So I've got my ink. We're gonna start with mustard seed. All right, let me see any comments. I'm gonna, while this, my pixie spray is setting, I'm gonna see if I've missed any important questions. 
Thank you guys all so, so much for being here tonight. If I haven't said hi to you yet, hello, hello. I've got so many fun comments going on. You guys are fantastic, and I'm so glad we're having a good Wednesday night and a fantastic Facebook Live. All right, mustard seed. Okay, Patricia got it, mustard seed. Everything is so culinary. Oh, you know what? And I am going to be using wild honey and carved pumpkin, so they're all foods tonight. So, all right. Oh, you guys, everyone's celebrating anniversaries and birthdays. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful time and have found special ways to celebrate. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take my Sunray stencil. I'm going to try to center it the best that I can. And I'm going to push it down. Oh, that's not centered. That's okay. I'm being a little picky. All right. Yes, Patricia, this will be available to watch on replay. Um, it'll be available on replay to watch in this Facebook group. You can catch it as soon as I'm done. You can catch it as a replay. But I'm also going to be uploading this to our YouTube page um, probably another day this week. And you can catch it on YouTube as well. All right. What I'm going to go ahead and do is by taking the mustard seed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start inking the top. I'm going to kind of do the mustard seed everywhere that there's squeezed lemonade because the mustard seed is darker. That way I'm going to show a nice variation in colors. All right. Now the next color we're going to go into, and I will keep my blender out, is I'm going to use some wild honey. And don't be deceived by the color of the label. It's what, from what I have found, it's really much more of like a macaroni and cheese color rather than like a burnt or a, a light burnt orange. So grab my wild honey blending foam, dab off the excess. All right. And I'm just going to kind of go in. And if you hear some groaning, that is my die cutting machine, not my die cutting machine. Oh my gosh. It's my laminator. Y'all been a little bit of a week. I'm glad to be crafting tonight. All right, so we're going in, ink blending. And now I am going to be covering up the exposed bleach spots, and that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to have some bleach spots remaining from the areas that are covered up by the stencil. All right, final color we're going to use is some carved pumpkin to get some good old orange in there. And I'm going to grab my blending foam. Oh, you're so welcome, Patricia. Mac and cheese, love it. I feel like that's an appropriate color name. Sometimes you gotta just default to your good old Crayola colors and go with that. And I'm going in right now with some carved pumpkin and I'm just kind of like blending the edges. Doing a little bit up here too. And then we're gonna go back in with that wild honey. And that's gonna just really help blend things out. And as you can see, I am still keeping a hand on my stencil, but that pixie spray is really helping keeping this stencil into place. I don't have much movement going on where you get those blurred stencil lines. If you guys haven't picked up a can of pixie spray yet or a spray bottle, whatever you wanna call it, it's definitely something that you're going to use a lot in your craft arsenal. So, all right, so we've got everything all blended. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna peel reveal by taking my stencil off. And as you can see, I've got that sun ray background that just looks like the sun is shining and I don't have any blurry lines. It is exactly what I was going for. I'm so thrilled with it. All right. Do you sell that container with the ink pad? Um, the ink pad holder is from the ink stand. It's from another company. Um, it's not a ThermoWeb product. It's just something I use just so I can um, craft effectively and keep things in place when I'm doing a Facebook Live, honestly. All right. Yes, Pixie Spray is absolutely fantastic. And I'm doing a little bit of cleanup right now too. Um, but let me see if I can multitask. By showing this a little bit closer, and knocking stuff over naturally. All right, just do a wee little bit cleanup. All right, 
We're gonna set that off to the side. And now I wanna go into a little bit of flock fun. So I've grabbed actually four flocks and I've grabbed, I die cut a couple images uh, from Lawn Fawn die cuts. I've gone ahead and I have die cut from the sunshine yellow deco foil flock. I did the outside in stitch sun. So I'll show you guys the die set just so you understand. It's this outside sun and it also cuts the center out as well. Honestly, not ideally what I wanted, but I'm going to work with it. On top of that, I have also die cut two clouds from the outside in stitched cloud die set. The dies look like this. There's actually two of them. There's a smaller version of the exact same cloud. Um, I've, and this is from the white latte flock, which these flocks that I'm using tonight, most of them are the four piece flocks that come from the larger sleeves. So this is the white latte is what I die cut the cloud from. I also die cut a face. This is the negative. I die cut this from another die set called the Stitch Teapot. Um, and I die cut this from the Black Velvet Flock. And finally, I don't know if you guys can see it really well, but there are two pink ovals that I'm going to use as blush. Those are the Pink Carnation Flock from uh, Thermoweb as well. And of course, that's the one that fell over. But... This is the pink carnation flock. So I'm using four different flocks to make my sun and it's gonna turn out wonderful. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did it. Um, let's see. The die cuts are great. I, if you guys are looking to use these specific dies, if you don't have ones that'll work in your craft stash already, I do have all of the products I'm using for tonight's live on the ThermoWeb blog on a dedicated blog post. Um, so please feel free to check it out. Um, I've got everything listed out for you so you can shop accordingly and have some fun. So let me see. Let me check really quickly. Any questions? Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you so much for being so kind today. All right. Pink Carnation, I love Pink Carnation. And it's such a good, just light pink. It works for all of those soft pink colors. We also got some different, like darker or more vibrant pink flocks as well. Um, specifically, I know we've got the Poppin' Pink Neon Flock by Rena K Designs, which is gonna be a very vibrant pink. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys how I went ahead and colored this. So as you can see on the original sun, there's kind of an orange ombre around the sun and on both the face and the rays. And I also have a little bit of yellow on the clouds as well. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is with this carved pumpkin foam blender, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna start to blend it from the inside out. Because our flocks are able to be ink blended and you can kind of customize the colors to whatever you want. So if you guys don't have it yet, that white latte color, if you invest in that, that's basically going to mean that you can make any color flock that you want because you're gonna start with a white base, but you can do any other colors too. Like this, I'm getting a really good orange to yellow ombre starting with the yellow sunshine flock. All right, just kind of going in. Perfect, we're gonna go with the sun. Is it better to get flock and color? You know what, Jilly? It's entirely whatever your project is looking for. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of color variance because I feel like when you see the sun, it's usually not just a, like a solid color. But sometimes you're just going to want to use the flock as its singular color, and that's going to be perfect as well. So it just depends on what you want to use it for. I think if you're using the flock just to die cut, um, Get any color you want, and then you can ink blend it if you want some color variants. I like it, I think it adds to it. Um, we're gonna go back in, we're gonna go in with some squeezed lemonade just to kind of smooth the colors out, to kind of blend up any sort of harsh edges by the orange. Right. And then I'm gonna go in All right, we're getting there. I just love die cutting and coloring the flock. I think it's just such a fun effect for me. If it works for you, you do it too. But if not, no big deal. Flock is perfect on its own as well. All right. 
Oh, thank you, thank you, Julia. Yeah, so flock paper, it does have a paper background to it. Um, it's not the same material, so the backing does adhere directly to any sort of project. Um, I'm actually gonna show you a little bit of that later tonight too. You can also adhere onto your flock. Um, you just wanna be delicate with your uh, project because Flock does kind of have a pull away quality to it where the flock is meant to come off if you're going to be using it as like a transfer of sorts. Um, so if you're going to glue something to it, just don't try to disrupt it much, um, which you shouldn't really have to disrupt it anyways. All right. Do you need to use a pigment ink to color flock? You could use a dye ink. Um, I have Catherine Pooler inks and I have distress inks as well. I've used those before to distress my flock. Um, I use the oxide, which is a hybrid ink and there are pigment qualities to it. So you could really use any ink that you want for it. Um, I say use the ink that you're most comfortable blending with and see how that works. All right. All right. All right. Next, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to get this little smiley face into place. And I'm going to do that by putting this negative on and I'm going to, to so I know how to space my eyes and mouth accordingly. All right. So we're going to go ahead like that. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Ultra Bond liquid adhesive. to use it as a negative. And then we're gonna push the eyes into place. We're gonna do the other eye. Eat. See, this is where one of those tools would come in. A lot of help. All right. That. So we've got the two eyes, and then I'm just going to freehand put the smiley into place. Just like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead, we're going to put the little blush circles. just to make a little smiley face. All right, so I've got some questions. What's the difference between foil and flock? So foil is like its name, it's foil. So it's got metallic qualities to it. Um, when you transfer it to a project, it's gonna have some sort of shine metallicness to it. For the most part, we do have some um, satin flocks that don't have those qualities, but for the most part, that's what you're gonna be looking at when you're using a foil. With a flock, flock by its name, it gives off a velvety texture. So you're adding like a velvet texture to the parts of your project that are flocked. You can use our flock with the different transfer gels we have, like the Blanco or the Duo, or like I'm doing today, night, you can just die cut the flock to use on its own. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is I want to get this circle into place. So I'm just going to fit it into the hole and I'm going to grab a couple pieces of pixie tape just to kind of keep everything lined up. I'm not going to solely rely on the pixie tape, but this is going to keep my sun together and see, I'll show you guys in a sec. See, now my son is all held together with a couple pieces of pixie tape. Right, am I missing any other questions? The flocking is so much better when you have when you use to glue down flock stuff. Of course, snap to die cut and create texture. Yay. Both ways, a transfer, that's a lot of fun. Die cutting it, also a lot of fun. Just depends on how you want to use it. Zorro for a few seconds. That's funny. Can flock be laminated like foil or glued down? Um, yes. I believe with how you're asking it, you can process your flock through your laminator to transfer it to a dried gel. Um, so yes, I believe if that's how you're asking about it, like when you're doing with foil and you're using like a, a Blanco gel or a Duo gel, it'll work with that. It's the same sort of concept. 
All right, so cute. Completely different. Yes, our products are shiny fun. We have rainbow colors. Yes, we do. So, so cute. Love the face. You do need the pink carnation. It's so good. It works perfect for those little blush circles. All right, and I'm just catching up on some comments. So if you use transfer gel, it adheres like foil. Yes, um, that's the best way I can put it. You can use the deco you can use the transfer gel blanco or duo and in in lieu of using a foil you can use a flock instead yeah absolutely and you can experiment with it that way i've done it several many times i don't have any backgrounds in front of me to show you but yes that's absolutely one of the ways that it can be used all right so the other thing that i want to do is i want to distress the edge of the bottom of my card or my clouds oh my gosh and this is the squeezed lemonade I'm just going in to add a little bit of color to my clouds. Just like that. And as you can see, it just gives a little bit of color to my clouds, so there's a little bit of an ombre going on. So, what I would like to do is work on my background because all of my little sun pieces are ready. And we can start working on our transfer adhesives so i have the uh, adhesive transfers this is the unity sentiment 2 set and we're going to be using the sentiment hello so this nice big scripty hello and then also the word sunshine and it does come in two ways you can have just plain text or you can have the negative of it in the box and we're going to take the negative of the sunshine in the box um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use my scissors to fussy cut out this for the word hello. I'm going to show you guys how I use it. And I am going to be using a heat transfer. However, you guys can use it with your laminator as well. Whatever works best for you. Or laminator. Oh my gosh, I'm sounding like I'm repetitive. You can use it with your die cutting machine for a pressure transfer. All right, we're just cutting. All right, just cutting this out. I'm trying to cut this bottom part kind of close to the letters because there's going to be a little bit that I'm going to have to creatively overlap. All right, so I've got my hello. And I'm going to move on to my next piece. I'm going to cut out that sunshine word. All laminators work with deco foil. You just have to test your settings for the laminator for your heat transfer process. For example, I have a Royal Sovereign laminator that works well when I have it on its hot heat setting. Um, there are some recommendations from ThermoWeb on the website for particular models of laminators and what sort of settings to use, if that's something of interest to you. But that doesn't mean other laminators will not work. But we do not sell any laminators on the ThermoWeb website. All right, so I've got my hello, I've got my sunshine. I'm gonna take a second to take a, uh, a drink of water. Let me catch up on some comments. Thank you so much for sharing that video, Julia. All right. Okie dokie. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start putting our adhesive transfers into place. Um, yes, Sally, this is going to be recorded. Uh, it is being recorded right now. So you'll be able to watch the replay uh, either in the Facebook uh, group that you're in right now. This replay will be available as soon as I'm done. Also, we will be uploading this replay to our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch it there at a later date as well. Typically, that's up and ready within two to three days at most, sometimes quicker. Um, but we will get that uploaded for everyone to watch. So what I'm doing right now is there is a backing to the adhesive transfers. I'm peeling it off. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it in place. 
I'm gonna do it kind of in the center where it says hello. All right, just like that. And then we're just gonna kind of press it down. And then I'm going to take the sunshine word Oh, my poor little laminator. And we're gonna line this up. And I love that these tra uh, adhesive transfers make beautiful foiled sentiments. Just kind of nudging it into place before we process it. All right, so that's gonna be my sentiment that says, hello, sunshine. And what I have is our craft carrier sheet. I have a piece of cardstock in here that I use with my sandwich. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this in our sandwich. And I'm gonna go ahead and process it through my laminator. So let me grab that. He's a little noisy, but he's fine. All right, so we're just gonna process it through. All right. Oh, thank you so much, Carrie. And Sally, you are so welcome. Uh, Dina, I'm sorry about connectivity issues and anyone that may be having it. I know how frustrating it can be, especially from me on a live end. Sometimes I even get a slow internet signal and I'm just like, oh, because I don't wanna ruin anything for you guys. All right, Kevin, oh, you've got your own laminator. You got the Glimmer machine, so you're ready to go. Amanda, I agree. This font is just so fun. Like, it's one of my favorite font styles, and it just really gives you sort of like a casual vibe, and it's not so formal, you know? I mean, that's just basically the opposite of casual, so I just reiterated myself, but that's okay. All right. Is there, it's like a sticker on both sides. So yeah, so let me show you what it is. So it's two-sided. The portion that's got the black font on it, the sticker is directly under it. So what you do is when you take the backing off, you put the black sticker part onto your project. And then what you do is after you run it through your laminator or if you do a pressure technique, you're gonna go ahead and you can remove it like a sticker, like a removable sticker. Hopefully that one's being, that one's just tiny. That one's tiny and I have short nails. So we're gonna use like that. And then I'm gonna try to hold this up so you guys can see it but you can see that there is sticker remaining, like a residue now on my project that says, hello sunshine. So what I'm gonna do is I have a piece of pre-cut, this is the copper deco foil, and I'm going to go ahead and place this right on top, just kind of smooth it out a little bit, just like that, and then make sure it's covering everything, and we're gonna go ahead and process it once again through our laminate. And yes, Susie, they are so fun to use. You gotta try them. Should laminator be hot or cold? Absolutely, if you're using a laminator with any of the ThermoWeb products, as far as I'm aware, you should always be using a hot setting, not a cold setting. That heat transfer when you're using a laminator is what's going to transfer it onto your project. So does it just need pressure or does it need the heat too? It needs, Patricia, one or the other, but not both. So if you're operating in your stash and you don't have a laminator, you just have a, a die cutting machine, you can use just pressure. Or like I'm doing tonight, I'm using my laminator, so I'm only using heat. You do not need both. All right. And Cindy, I believe you can use a mink machine. I am not fully familiar with the product. Um, but I believe it's a yes. All right, so let's go ahead and have a peel reveal. We're gonna show you guys how this went ahead and transferred. So I'm gonna pull it up slowly. And see how it says, hello sunshine. 
So I've got that really nice transfer. Also, because I had a really light yellow background, I went ahead and used a darker foil just because I thought it stood out really nicely. Uh, Nisha, what color distressings did you use? To go back to that, I used a uh, squeezed lemonade, uh, mustard seed, wild honey, and carved pumpkin distress oxide ink. So that's what I went ahead and used. Um, I also am going to use my sand eraser just to erase a little bit. All right. Perfect. Got exactly what I wanted. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting our card together. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Ultra Bond Adhesive to get my clouds into place. And we're gonna put one cloud right here. And I'm gonna do my little cloud up on top. Oh, my little glue bottle that could. He's stuck with me through so much. All right. And now I'm gonna use some of the 1 16th inch foam tape and we're gonna go ahead and use that on the sun portion. That's gonna give our sun a little bit of lift and kind of give a 3D element to the project. We do have foam tape that comes in both white and black in both 1 16th and 1 8th inch of th uh, thickness. It just depends which one you want to use on what you're making. I often default to the 1 16th inch just because it's a little bit more, it's a littler lift and that's usually the effect that I'm going for, but you go for whatever you want. Um, oh, the eraser that I was using was a mono eraser by Tombow. I do like it quite a bit and it lasts quite a bit of time. And it's also possible, um, regarding the question about where on the website that the laminator information is, that's something that I found, I think over a year ago. So it's possible that page no longer exists. Um, but it's, and so I apologize if I spoke out of turn, um, but it was something I had used previously. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our sun put into place. Make sure it's nice and centered. All right. Look at that. All right, so we got our sun all ready to go. And now all I have to do is add a couple embellishments. I thought it would be really fun to use some iridescent embellishments for my project. So I have some clear iridescent bubbles from Studio Katia. So I'm just gonna dump some of those out and we're gonna go ahead and adhere those into place. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do glue first, I think. There, there. There. And then we're gonna do there. This is very easy to do when I've already put them into place once already. All right, so. We're going to go ahead and start placing these down. Do that. And then that. And thank you guys so, so much for all of your compliments. I love how this card turned out. Let's get two little ones. Now, don't forget for a list of all the products that I use to put this card together, there is a blog post over on the ThermoWeb blog that was published today that's got the list of all of the materials that I use to create this card. Let's go ahead and finish this off by adhering it to a card base. 
and then we're gonna be all done. And see, you know what I love about this project tonight? I didn't have to color a darn thing with markers. No stamps really required. This is all die cut, ink blending, and foiling. And a little bit, and I mean flock of course as well. All right. Go ahead and get the excess off. And y'all, I think I replicated it pretty good. This is a good job. All right. Could the material link be posted here too? Yep, okay, uh, Julia just posted it. Oh, you guys are all so sweet. Thank you, thank you so, so much. All right, so I'm gonna go over what I used to make this card. Julia, if you could begin the process of picking a winner for tonight's live, I think that would be fantastic. Um, and I'm just going to kind of recap. So we used a handful of products to make tonight's live. Of course, we ink blended the background using the Sunray background stencil by Lawn Fawn with some Distress Oxide inks. Um, we also used some Lawn Fawn dyes for our outside in Stitch Sun and Stitch Clouds, along with the face from the Stitch Teapot. Um, we then used the Unity Sentiments 2 transfer adhesives to get the Hello Sunshine sentiment. And we went ahead and used that with some copper deco foil. Um, also, of course, for the sun and the clouds, we used uh, Yellow Sunshine. We used Pink Carnation black velvet and white latte. So those are the colors that we use. And of course I finished this off with some embellishments of some clear iridescent bubbles. So while we're waiting to pick a winner, I'm gonna go ahead and, oh my gosh, you guys have been so sweet tonight. I'm gonna go in and try to thank everyone. So thank you, Susie and Patricia. And thank you, Dawn and Sandra and Bella and Amanda, thank you so much for being here tonight, Amanda. And we've got Martha, thank you, Martha, and Lucy, and Lisa. And Lisa, I apologize, I'm assuming L-E-I-S-A is Lisa, and if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I am apologizing. Thank you, Carrie and Carla, Lorraine, Dee Dee, thank you guys so much. Brenda, oh, Susie, I hope you try this, and I hope that it turns out amazing. Melanie, thank you, thank you, thank you. S Sally, oh, you're gonna have so much fun, I promise. Promise it's going to be a great time. And be sure to head on over to the blog if you haven't gotten anything yet that you got to start your fo uh, flocking. We've got everything linked on over there for you. Um, thank you, Emily and Robin and Cindy. So glad that you're here tonight. And thank you, Dawn. Um, let's see. Thank you, Lisa and Kathy, Carolyn, Linda, oh, Sally and Patricia. And then Jilly's got a question on the butterflies of Bruce. Yep, go ahead and send me a Facebook message, Jilly. I know that we've talked before. I'll be happy to help you after I'm done with the video tonight. And then oh, you guys are all so sweet. And what a fantastic group of crafters tonight. I'm so, so happy that y'all found me and that we were able to make this card together. Makes it, and it makes it so much fun when we're all talking together and just having a good Wednesday night. You guys have been absolutely amazing. So let's see. Uh, yes, you definitely, Susie, get yourself a die cutter for your birthday. It's a necessity. I remember... Let's see, I gotta notice that I had like an interrupted video thing, so we should be good. All right. And then our winner tonight is Rose. Okay, so we've got a winner. Her first name is Rose. We are looking for her last name. So we're getting there. So we're almost there. So Rose will be in, will be confirming who you are shortly. And then, oh, thank you, Don, and thank you, Amanda. Oh, and then Jamie, yes, uh, that email. I'm so happy that you guys found us with the email today. I'm oh, fantastic. We also tried using the events as well. Katrina had a really good response and people were very happy she used it in, uh, the events to create this so you guys get a reminder. So I hope that helps some of you as well. And then, oh, everyone is being so, so kind to congratulating Rose. So, uh, and 
What a what a wonderful Wednesday night. And you know what? Here's the other thing too. You guys didn't see me do any of the die cutting. Spoiler alert, it didn't take that long. So you can make a super cute card like this in well under an hour. And to me, that is a win. That is always a win when you can crank out something super cute in under an hour. The email was the ticket. Oh, thank you so much, Julissa. Reminders are always a good thing. I agree, Sally. I think at any age. All right. All right, you guys. Well, Rose Dittmer. So, okay. So, thank you so much, Rose. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send you a Facebook message so we can get your information and we can go ahead and get you your $25 ThermoWeb gift certificate. Um, yeah, and get your shop on. Y'all get your shop on. You don't need much of an excuse to. Someone just has to tell me that, like, oh, did you see this from this website? And then I'm over there with a cart full of stuff. And this is any, this is just my nature. So, anyways, thank you guys so, so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and and just check up on questions really well. Um, Sally says, I would love to watch you do the die cutting. Are there videos of that too? Um, I don't, there might, if you go over to the YouTube channel for ThermoWeb, I don't know if I have one of me doing it as a replay, Sally, but I know that when we launched the transfer adhesives, there were some demo videos by ThermoWeb that will show you how to use it with a, a die cutting machine as a pressure transfer method. So if you go over you to YouTube, I am confident that you will find what you are looking for. So, oh boy, shopping. <laughs> Rose, I'll send you that message shortly so we can go ahead and get that situated. And gosh, thank you all so, so much for being here tonight. You all have been absolutely wonderful. Like Julia just said, if you guys are listening to everyone who's saying they got notified tonight, buy a ThermoWeb email. And if you are not on the email list already, I've got a little bit of a tip for you. Head on over to the ThermoWeb website and you should, when you open up the website for the first time, you should get a prompt. And it should ask you if you're not subscribing already that you can provide your email address, subscribe to their newsletter, and also get a 10% off coupon off your first ThermoWeb purchase. Now, of course, this is if you haven't done one already and you haven't made a purchase, but that's a great little tip. And on top of that, we send you so much fun inspiration into your inbox. I always get a smile on my face when I get a ThermoWeb email. Even when it's for the stuff that the fabric team has created, I don't do any sewing or whatnot, but it's absolutely incredible what they're making. Um, so we'll send a little bit of crafty inspiration your way. Let you guys know when we're running some sales or specials. I know that we just did a 4th of July sale for some of our Pixie products. Um, and then also too, you're going to find out when we're going live in the event again. It's a great thing. And plus, if you cap, uh, cap it off with a 10% coupon off your first first purchase. There ain't no losing with that. So thank you guys all so, so much for being here tonight. Uh, I'm just making sure I haven't missed any questions, but I am going to begin the process of closing tonight's live. Um, if you guys have any questions and you're watching a replay or a question pops up after, never hesitate to post a comment in the group and just tag me in it um, or, or just tag me in this video. Um, whatever works. So thank you guys all so, so much being here tonight. And yes, one last thing as well. Wanted to let you guys know that there is a special post in the Facebook group. We are offering one person to join us for an upcoming DecoFoil release. So basically, you're going to be like a guest designer of sorts for ThermoWeb, and you're going to get some new release products to craft with. And it's really a great experience. So that post is in the Facebook group. Head on over to that post. I think all you got to do to enter is just comment. So you could just comment and say, this sounds great or whatever sounds up to you. And you're entered to be one of our potential upcoming uh, get designers that can join us on an upcoming release. So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you guys all so, so much being here to, uh, today. Um, and then I'm just, oh my gosh, questions are coming in and I'm always so happy to answer them for you. Lisa, what set was the hello from? This is from the Sentiments 2 Adhesive Transfers by Unity. Um, so that's the one that it's for. Right now there are two Unity sets on the Thermal Web website. Um, it's Sentiments 2, not Sentiments 1. Um, but spoiler alert, Sentiments 1 is also really cute and it's 
really going to be easy for it to sneak into your cart as well. Um, but there you go with that. Um, fabric. Yep, there's fabric items over there. Lots of fabric inspiration. And... What do we do to join this? Sally, um, the, like I said, there's a post in the group that lists all you got to do that you have to comment on. Um, it was posted with, I think it was posted on Monday. So you can go ahead and you can sort the post by what's most recent. You should be able to find it easily. I think that would be a great way to do it. Um, say Justin sent me. Oh my God, that would be so funny. I Hey, I, I stand here for that. Gina, no problem that you're late. You'll be able to catch the replay at any time. Um, and it'll be on YouTube eventually too. So thank you all so, so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead, get tonight's live all closed out. Remember, I'm Justin Adkins. Uh, Justin Note by Justin is my Instagram handle. If you haven't followed me yet, I'd love a follow if you guys want some more crafty inspirations. Also, spoiler alert, there's a lot more foiling and flocking to be found on my Instagram and my personal blog. Um, but I'm going to be back here in the ThermoWeb Facebook group uh, for the craft room two weeks from tonight for a special Facebook live with y'all. So you're going to get more crafting with me. I'll be sure to make an event. And we'll notify you guys via email as well. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm looking so much forward to seeing you guys on my next live.